Hi, I'm James P. Friel. And I'm Dean Holland. It's time to fasten your seatbelts, boys and girls. That's right. If you're an entrepreneur who's wanting to take your business to the next level and have a bit of fun while getting cutting edge advice on your business, marketing, and sales, welcome to Just the Tips, arguably the best podcast in the entire world. I guess that's good, right? Yeah, sounds good to me. All right. That was easy. That was the easiest thing we did all day. Yeah. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Just the Tips. This is your host, James P. Friel. I am thrilled that you guys are here with us today. We got an incredible show lined up for you. Today, I was the one who was late to the studio, but Dean, the one, the only bearded wonder from the United Kingdom, has been waiting here on his white noble steed, ready to walk in. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome to Mr. Dean Holland. Well, hey, <laughs> I was, there I am. <laughs> there you are. How are you doing, my friend? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, I'm awesome. As always, you know it's a good day when I get to spend it with you. Well, that's good. That's what keeps me going. <laughs> the only thing. The, the only, only thing. thing. Every Tuesday, I'm like, all right, I just got to make it to Tuesday. Just got to make it to Tuesday. And then that's just enough, just enough enjoyment in your life to make it through to the following week. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah, barely. Just enough to keep me going on. Indeed. Um, awesome. Indeed. Hey, how is is my sound all right? Uh, it's a little strange today. I'm it's not going to lie. Strange. All right, hold on one second. Let me make sure I got everything set up the right way. For the uh, for the listening public, James is going to dive in there and uh, rectify. Oh, I don't think I hear anything now. You don't hear anything. Oh, there we go. There we go. Yes, that sounds good. That sounds good? Yeah, I think that sounded good. All right, there we go. We'll roll with this. I mean, as good as you can possibly sound. I mean, obviously, the, the Grant, sound of Grant your voice is like dragging nails down a whiteboard or something, but you know, <laughs> scratching a cat at the window. Like, but but other than that, I'm sure it's fine. Awesome. All right, so uh, so we've got we've got a topic to talk about today. Obviously, we've revealed our hand in the yes. title of the show. Yes, uh, we which didn't I really lead with curiosity today, did we? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> we're like, you know what? We're going straight in. <laughs> creating the perfect sales pitch. So that's it. If you guys like that idea, stick around. If you don't <laughs> think you need to know how to sell anything, beat it. Yeah. Yeah. Get out of here. Yeah. What the <laughs> hell are you doing here? You don't want to sell stuff? Come on. This is just the tips. We're talking about sales and business. And that there, there is not an example of the perfect pitch, by the way. No, but, uh, we that's the opposite stick around of the anyway. pitch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> first do Classic. not do what we just did oh you gotta love it when a show about crafting the perfect pitch begins with the worst pitch ever as to why you should stick around and listen to that well actually <laughs> no, hold on a second here if if your if your value proposition is strong enough you can just get okay. on with it okay this is true okay sometimes what is it sometimes the best way to sell a horse is to say horse for sale <laughs> <laughs> as they always say <laughs> in Nottingham, as um, they say in the yard. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. So, uh, so we want to talk about creating a perfect pitch today, and I think that a lot of people, a lot of people have um, some weird beliefs around sales in general, True. and I, and I want to kind of deal with some of those and then get into, well, what what should you do? Right. Because right. I think I think there's people out there who range from like there's there's two sides of the spectrum. There's people who are completely unwilling to sell anything because it makes them feel gross and dirty. And they're just like, ah, like I don't want to sell anybody anything. Right. And then there's people on the other side of the spectrum who would sell their own mom swampland <laughs> in Florida if they thought they could make a quick buck. Right. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> They're like, oh, it's beautiful. You're going to love it. Can I see it? No, no, no. You'll see it once you buy it. <laughs> yeah. All right. So there's people on both ends of the spectrum. Um, I I would say we're not talking to the people who are trying to sell the swampland because, uh, you know, hopefully you guys find a better way to make a living without swindling people. We're talking <laughs> to people who have something that's genuinely of value here. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Something you can actually be proud of. Something that it is your it is so good, so of value for the people that you want to get it into their hands of that it is it becomes your ethical and moral duty to learn how to effectively sell that thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
Um, I'd love for you to unpack that that idea for just one second. What do you mean by the ethical and moral duty to sell your thing? Yeah, great. Uh, yeah, good starting point. So I, I, I see this net. This uh, I, I think it would be fair to say that I could look back at times where probably in hindsight, yeah, I'm not so necessarily proud of some of the things that I've maybe offered when I was learning. You know, I didn't really understand that concept of what a truly valuable product you can stand behind really was, you know, just being honest. And so, you know, when I compare that to today, where I have put so much effort, energy, resource into creating the very best products and solutions I can for my customers, then I view it now that actually, my customer is worse off not having my product than they are with having it. Oh, I love and that. And so I can now twist this mindset around and say, well, actually, if I don't learn how to sell my thing, if I don't learn how to get this into the hands of as many of those people that need this solution as I can, then not only am I not making money, not only am I not doing what my business requires of me, but I'm also letting people down. Because if I've created something that solves a true problem or provides a real need, then by not allowing people or not doing a good job to justify why this is a need for that person, then I'm causing harm to them because now I'm letting them continue to suffer or struggle or go without. And I'm also potentially putting that person at risk of dealing with somebody that doesn't have a solution as good as mine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and I think if you can gain that belief in yourself, then that helps this whole discussion we're going to have. Like, I believe that has to be the starting point. I agree with that, man. That's such a, that's such a powerful way to start this conversation. If my thing really does what it intends to do and it solves a particular problem and I don't do my best to get it out there, then I'm, I'm actually like by like active omission, hurting people Exactly. In some way, because I have a great solution to a problem that they have and I'm not working hard enough or being clear enough right. on how that's going to help them solve their problem. And to me, that seems like ultimate selfishness. Exactly. Exactly. And this just 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 in case I know we have a lot of different people in different situations listen to the show like this isn't just for an approach that could have sounded like what I've just said there. That could sound like, oh, this is for information product sellers, coaches, consultants that provide a, a, a service in that capacity or yeah, a digital no product and training. But like I could even let, let's look at an example of your James, obviously the rose, the roses the, on the e-commerce side. Like we could say that these are, well, I, I would say this anyway, like these are the best roses I've ever seen on, on the planet. Like they really truly are. So you know that you have the best damn roses on this earth and they are going to last longer. They're, they look better. They're you're just a better product all around. But, you know, they're flowers, right? They are roses. Now, we could fairly say then we would be justified in saying that if you know that, and you allow me as somebody that wants to buy his wife roses for Valentine's Day, if you shy away from letting me know about your product <laughs> and allow me to go and buy some substandard roses that may cost the same or even more, yeah. that are going to not last half the amount of time, then really you did me wrong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, you allowed that to happen. So there's just, you know, this applies to every business. I don't care what you're selling, whether it's coaching, consulting, local business, digital product business, this applies across the board. Well, and I, I love that you came up with a new tagline for us. Maybe you didn't mean to. The best <laughs> damn roses on planet Earth. <laughs> That's really go. good. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to keep that. I'm going to keep that one in my pocket, but, but you're right. Right. From, uh, you know, and I think, uh, you know, there might be some like really extreme examples. Like if you had something that's life-saving, right. You have some life-saving, you know, I don't know, whatever. If you don't get that out there, it's like, well, why, like, why wouldn't you, if you had something that genuinely helps people, uh, exactly. solve a problem and, and it doesn't have to be life-saving though, either. I think that's the other thing people are like, well, like, you know, my product, my product just does this or my product just does that. Well, like, first of all, if you're not excited about the problem that you're helping people solve, yeah, you probably should be in another business, period. Yeah. Like, I'm just going to like, we're a few minutes into the show. I'm already asking people to shut their doors. <laughs> if, if you're, if you don't have interest 
in the person that you're helping solve their problem and your product doesn't solve that problem, you got to like look at yourself and be like, why am I even doing this? Right? Because there's so many people out there, so many different people groups, so many different problems that exist. There's, there's more problems than there are solutions. Yes. Okay. Yes. Always. And there always will be because every solution we create creates another problem anyway. So there's going to be out, problems outnumber solutions. I don't know what the number is, but I'm going to say on a magnitude yes. more. Uh, yes, and, I agree. Okay. And so first of all, if you're not like into the problem that you're solving for people, find another, find another problem to solve that you yeah. can be like, I am freaking pumped about solving this problem because it fulfills me to see the difference that I can make in people. And that doesn't have to be, you know, like you say, coaching or consulting or, or products, it could be anything, right? Because the idea is the fundamental idea behind creating the perfect sales pitch is that you understand you are providing a solution to a problem that exists in somebody's life. Yes. 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 And I think that's, that's a, that's a nice little lesson, actually. That's something that I didn't necessarily attach to business or making money for, for quite some time. Actually, I didn't, I didn't see that attachment. You know, now I, I, I think all I ever do in business is figure out yeah. what problems I need to solve next. <laughs> yeah. You know, what yeah, problems absolutely. are there and what, how I can help them. So, all right. So, so like, let's say we've got this frame of reference in mind that we're, we're here we have uh, a fundamental belief that our thing is solving a problem that's a real problem that people uh, that people are experiencing. Now, how do we how do we build a sales pitch? Like, how do we create that bridge from where our product is over here and the people are over here? This is what I really want to get into here today, and mm -hmm. make make sure that you're you're not talking to like an empty room so to speak. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I suppose it depends. It depends like uh, what, what part of this journey do you want to begin? Cause I, I think, you know, what we've just touched on there is, is kind of like really attached to what I would say here. And that is to first truly understand the problems that you are solving, you know, cause I think sometimes it's easy to get wrapped up in our products. Like, Oh, I do have the best product. You know, like it's, it's one thing, like we've just said to have that belief and that conviction to know, like I have a great thing that can help people or provide what they need. It's another to understand what those true needs are that you are providing, you know, what the problems are that you are solving in people's lives. Because I think that's, you know, something that you have to be clear on. And you have to also be clear on who that person is. Yeah. All you right. Know? So, so I guess like, I mean, we could probably dedicate Three to well, five this is what shows. I was say. It depends where we want to go with this, where where this conversation wants to go, really. <laughs> yeah. Well, I I would say I'm I'm pretty interested in the idea of um uh Hugo says, Hi guys, what's up, man? Uh if you guys are out there listening to us, oh, yes. comment, say hello, call in. Uh, we'd love to hear from you guys. Um, any questions you've got about what we're talking about, too, just drop them in the comments and uh, we'll get to them if we can. Any attacks so, on James, any abuse, <laughs> just random abuse for James. We like to read that too. Right. One of <laughs> us does. Um, so so I, I would say if we want to say, all right, creating the perfect sales pitch, maybe this is part one. Because I didn't know how like how deep are we gonna go? And I I just want I want people listening to this to have such a great understanding of mm -hmm. the psychology that goes into this the strategy that goes into this, the actual mechanics that go into this. So if we got to take a step back and like lay some foundation down and we follow up on this, like, you know, session two, session three, whatever, I'm, I'm down with that. If you are, I think it might be a good idea because I think actually one of the biggest problems that people have in selling is not laying the foundations and getting clear on the initial parts. Ah, I know. And that's the problem. Like most people are like, Oh, I just want to do the sexy stuff. But the, you got to have the foundation, right? You can't build the skyscraper without a good foundation. Otherwise, exactly, it's like, exactly. It's just, and it just you know reminds me like the mistakes I've spoke about on this show before with our with our you know cosmetic side of things. You know, we we created a great product and we thought we knew it was better than everything else, and we couldn't sell it. And I think and I you know it's I, I see the the huge mistake we made and it and it cost us like two years 
you know, two years of, of effort. And it all came back to like, oh, we didn't get clear on the, the foundational things first. We just tried to sell this product, sell this item. And it just yeah. wasn't, wasn't happening because of that. So even though the pitch was good, I believe, well, it's still the same pitch, <laughs> actually, as when it wasn't working. So or almost. So I think those foundational parts to crafting the perfect pitch and being able to successfully sell your product, I think, you know, there's definitely some initial groundwork. All right. So so I would say creating the perfect sales pitch for me is uh, at a very high level. And this is something that uh, that Todd Brown really helped me get this distinction on. Nice. Is it, the distinction between marketing and sales really, really important and very simple when you hear it. But the perfect sales pitch is going to be a combination of both of yes. them. Okay. And the idea is that in marketing, the focus is on your prospect, their needs, their wants, their desires. And then sales is about your product, your offer, or your service. Right. All right. And most people, and oh my gosh. And Todd's so good at that stuff. And what, what, uh, what I think most people are doing is it's product first. Product, yeah. product, 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 or service, 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 right? Um, and so the uh, so that's the first that's the very very first distinction that I want to make. So in order to craft this perfect sales pitch, we have to back up before we get to like closing techniques and closing strategies and all the things because I think sometimes people are like, there's probably like six magic words that you can <laughs> say to get anyone to buy anything from you at any point in time. <laughs> and you're just like, uh, no, there's not. <laughs> it's seven. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's actually seven. You've been li- you've been lied to this entire time. <laughs> um, there are better ways of closing for sure, but it's not all about closing. Like closing is the final step in yeah. this perfect sales pitch, and we can get to that when we're ready to get to that. But let's let's take a step back and we'll say, okay, fine. If marketing part of this umbrella of this perfect sales pitch, getting into your prospects, mind understanding their needs, their wants, their desires. One of the, uh, one of the frameworks that's been really helpful for me is uh, something I learned a long time ago from Tony Robbins. This, the six human needs. Ah, yes. Significance, certainty, variety. Um, uh, what is it? Significance, certainty, variety, connection yeah growth or love and connection growth and contribution that's it you got it okay all right so the reason that we bring this up now is because you got to be clear which which of those is the primary thing that you're trying to use to like understand like where is that need really coming from because before when we said okay your your product or your service solves a problem it doesn't mean that it solves a, you know, I, uh, you know, I need a, somebody's like, well, if you need to sell a drill bit, what are you really selling? Are you selling the drill bit or are you selling the hole in the wall? Right. Right. You Well, I, I need a hole in the wall, but the drill bit is the way to get me there. Right. And so some, some products and services are meeting a need for significance, right? Yeah. Like look at, yeah. you know, look at uh, like a Rolex watch or an expensive watch or something like that. Right. If it's simply my product tells time, then you know it's probably not you're meeting that need for significance. It's it's you're meeting the need for, you know, just like it's it's just practical, it's certainty. Like yes. I know that this thing can tell time. Okay, awesome. It never stops. Great. Perfect. Right. But you got to know like which of those buckets mm-hmm. are you really in before you start thinking about how you're going to craft this message. Um, and so I'm curious, like when you're thinking about putting a sales pitch together or, you know, creating this perfect, perfect sales pitch from marketing all the way through sales, how much, how much are you thinking about like the core fundamental needs of your prospect or your customer? Yeah, it's a great point. I, I was kind of laughing there because, uh, sort of smiling to myself as you, as you were talking about that, because <clears throat> again, it's only really out of the last 15 years of, of learning online marketing, it's only really in the last five years that, or maybe even three or four years that that lesson there that you've just shared really hit home for me. 
Like, because I used to think, you know, like, oh, you know, take the cosmetic stuff. What do you sell? Oh, we we sell makeup brushes. Like, oh, what what need are you providing there? Oh, people want to put their makeup on. You know, right. like that, that's the problem I'm solving. That's what I'm selling. And uh, you know, taking on board what you've just shared there, you know, we realize like, no, what we're selling, we're selling confidence. You know, yeah. like that's that's what we're selling to our customers, the gift of confidence almost. You know, and once we started to really understand like what we're actually providing to our customer, you know, we're not providing a brush. You know, if we were providing a brush, then we've got there's a million other options they can choose. Like, but I'm providing confidence to my customer. This is just the item that happens to deliver upon that promise. You know, so I think, you know, in terms of how much time we put into this side of things previously, none. Right. How much time I put into it now, a significant amount, because I realize how, again, how important it is. If I just try and go to market with a product or solution, no matter how good it is, if I don't truly understand those pieces of what this is actually providing, to my customer, what the end results, that end thing that they get from this or what they're seeking to get from this, it's always going to be a lot more difficult. And I, I fear this is where people then get into battles on, you know, fighting over pricing. You know, I, I now they're selling the cheapest thing because that's the only way they found to compete and things like this. I think that component there and truly getting to grips to understand that, that can stand you apart, like from all the competition. Well, it's because you're you're tapping into that innate desire that people already have yes right? and the thing that they won't it's typically the thing that people won't speak about they don't even know that yes yeah very true yes yeah you know because no, nobody is nobody's like super adept at understanding like why do i want all the things that i want true i suppose right? most people aren't like me <laughs> <laughs> you're like i want an artificial jellyfish tank to make me feel significant Yes. And I want this a little is my bit level of significance these days. <laughs> right. Exactly. Right. But uh, but I think that most people, most consumers are not are very unaware of their own actual like really base desires on why they want things. Yes, true. And but but great marketers and salespeople are students of human behavior and students of psychology and make it a point to study why people want the things that they want and then create products that meet those needs. And then they articulate it in a way that connects with the language that people would actually use to talk about it. Oh, 20 minutes in, there's so many tips <laughs> blowing. What is going on today? <laughs> I don't even know. I don't know. I guess I got to make up for the fact that I was late today. This I feel, is true. This I feel is true. especially compelled. Um, <laughs> but so like, so great example. So in my consulting business where we go in and we work with fast growing companies and help them put systems in place so that they can grow and scale faster without overwhelm and headaches and all this other stuff. The need there is certainty. Yeah. They're like, I want to have some degree of certainty that when I come in tomorrow, things aren't going to fall apart. <laughs> or if I want to go on a vacation, when I come back, everything's going to be good, right? Yeah. Then yeah. Co contrast that with, you know, a company that might do like zipline adventures or something like that. They're, they're in the business of uncertainty or variety. Yes. Yeah. Right, yeah. Right, right. Because it's not like just because I want certainty means I want certainty in all areas of my life. True. You know, yes. I don't want to just eat, you know, chicken and rice every day. <laughs> right. You know, some nights I want Italian, some nights I want Mexican, some nights I want this or that or the other thing. And so you got to be clear which of these needs is like the primary thing that you're helping people with, because that's going to surface the way in which you talk about it. Yeah. And, and the other thing I'll say, there's so much in this creating a perfect sales pitch, which is why I, I kind of agree with probably going to need more than one show for this. Yeah. But six weeks, six weeks now. If you can six just, weeks. You, we're, this you is know. all we're talking about until 2026. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Dean will have a new horse by the time we're done talking about this. <laughs> Actually, I think you're talking about getting a, a mule next. Yes. Yes. I, I feel like that would be more appropriate. <laughs> an ass on an ass. Um, <laughs> I digress. Um, but, uh, but, but then, 
when you're building your product or your service, if your product or your service doesn't meet the need that you're telling people that it will, yes, then they're going to hate you for it. They're yes. going to be like, you told me that this is going to give me certainty, but this thing hardly ever works. Right. The complete right? ultimate. Yeah. Outrage. One star reviews on Amazon, you know, <laughs> customer service calls, like all this stuff. If you were like, hey, you know, we're going to, it's a gift of the month club and we're never going to tell you what we're going to send you. And people who sign up for that, they're like, oh, that sounds fun. That sounds interesting. Like get a little variety. Some months you send them something weird. Some months you send them something else. You're going to be like, oh, okay. It, it meets the need that I was trying to fulfill, right? Yes. So you, yeah. So you, you absolutely have to be clear, not just in your own mind with the psychology of the person and the need that you're trying to help them meet, but you have to make sure that your product or your service delivers. Yes. Which comes back that. to what we said at the very beginning where we began this, right? It's like, it has to deliver. You have to be able to ethically stand behind what it is that you're offering. So important. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, uh, so, so in any case, I think that's, that's the stage for this conversation, um, is, you know, understanding why people, why people are going to buy the thing that you have for them to buy. Right. Yeah. I used to do, I used to do, uh, in-home water treatment sales back in college. Okay? Really? <laughs> yeah. I never told you this. I don't recall this. No. <laughs> All right. I got some great stories about <laughs> success and failure. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, which ones I want to hear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, they're both actually they're equally good. Getting kicked out of people's homes and also like getting the sale, right? But uh, but in that business, I was clear that the reason that people would buy a water treatment system for their home is they want certainty that what they're drinking and using to cook and wash their clothes and wash themselves and all that they want certainty. Like yeah. I feel safe with this. Right. Yeah. So, so very first, like you talked about the cosmetics thing and the confidence that you guys are helping, uh, these women. Right. right. And you got to realize like, well, why, why do these people want to buy the product in the first place? And it's not ever, it is never, ever, ever, ever. I want to buy this product because I want a makeup brush. Yeah. Never. It's, I want to buy the makeup brush because I think it will do this for me. And then you've got to look at that even deeper to say, doing this for them meets what need. Yes. Yes. Oh, so good. So in fact, this is, this is almost everything to do with sales because these bits we get right. The selling part, that, that part that we're all scared of, uh -huh. it becomes easy. You know, and this is why I think it's so important that we did begin here because like the part that we're really, everybody really tries to race to or avoid is that end closing part. But the, all of this, this early piece, this is what makes that sale actually just easy, just straightforward. It's almost just like a natural consequence of taking the time to do these parts. It really is. It's crazy too, how well it works. Yeah. When you're just like, oh, I'm going to be real about what your needs are. I'm going to be real about why you want to buy my product or service to meet a need. And I'm going to dig deeper to say, what fundamental human need does this meet for you? And then everything grows off of that. Yes. Okay. All right. So for me, that's like, there's a lot in there and we could go into way more in that kind of phase of things. But I want to set this as like the first piece of what you need to do to create the perfect sales message. And now I guess we can move to the second piece, which is actually like, all right, great. How, how do we start articulating that? How do we, how do we get to the bottom of that? How do we do all of those things? Unless there's something else you want to add to phase one before we move forward. No, let's move forward. Let's all right, that. we're moving forward. Um, so the second piece is um, once, once we understand these human needs, once we understand the need that our product or our service is, uh, you know, is designed to meet in the marketplace. Now we need to start to put a message together. Okay. You, you have no business putting a marketing message together until you have a thorough understanding of the things that we just talked about. But let's say we got those in place. We're clear. And I want to add here, if you're not clear on the stuff in the first phase, 
it's okay. You don't have to have all the answers. Go out and talk to people. Yes. Great point. Like, don't Great. be afraid. Don't be afraid of people. And if you're afraid of people, hire somebody who's not afraid of people to go out <laughs> and talk to those people. Yes. Very true. No, I'm glad you threw that in there, actually, because I'm just, I'm just sitting here thinking. I think it's, it's all good and well when you've gone through these things to sit there and say, oh, this is what you need to do first. But like the actual practical application of some of this, like the reason that you and I, James, can sit here and say these things is because we didn't have it all figured out from the very beginning. We just had a starting point and we started. I had and exactly it, none of it figured out from the very beginning. Right. Some would argue you still don't, just life <laughs> in general. <laughs> <laughs> That's my uh, lovely co host, sir, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. <laughs> Your biggest fan. <laughs> yes. My, my only fan. <laughs> incredible incredible but yeah that's that's you know that ultimately is probably always going to be one of the most important approaches that you have in business is like yes we need a starting point but at some point the best way to figure things out is to start and like you like you've said like you know getting out there and putting yourself out there speaking to people you know often can be a fantastic thing if you literally don't even know what to begin with yeah yeah. So if you don't know what to begin with, definitely spend some time in research, right? Primary research, which means going out and talking to people who might be in your target market, you know, having phone calls, you know, all this sort of stuff. Sorry if this sounds like work, uh, but it is. You got to <laughs> do, you got to do some work. There's not, no one said it was going to be easy. I didn't. I don't know. Maybe other people have said it's going to be easy. I've never been the ones that said it's going to be easy. Um, but, uh, and then there's like secondary research too, right? Like look at, um, you know, what, what blogs are popular, what comes up in Google when you search for things, you know, what magazines are talking, wh what are magazines talking about? Like all these different things. These are, you know, I was one of these, I was one of the people who didn't want to spend any of this time doing any of this foundational research when I first started my career. That's what's hilarious. I, I feel like we're I'm sitting here with this deep dark secret as well that I'm like, oh, I didn't want to do any of this. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. And and people who came before me were like, You need to do this. And I was like, No, no, I don't. I can outsmart <laughs> the system. I can outsmart years and years of human psychology, right? And the truth is, that's the slow road, right? Like if you take a little bit more time up front, then everything does go easier. And so feel free to challenge us on this. It's okay. You yeah, don't want to we'll do it this way. Episode for in 12 months when you're exhausted and then yeah. come back. <laughs> yeah, come back. We'll send you we'll send you a t-shirt with like egg on our, one of our faces yeah. or something like that. <laughs> um so so do that research, but then in that research now we get to the point where we can actually start creating um the beginning of our perfect sales pitch, which is our marketing message and that highlights some of the core needs that your product or your service fulfills, right? Yeah. Hey, do you feel overwhelmed at work? Hey, you know, are you, uh, you know, do you feel like you're in the doghouse with your relationship and your wife never feels like she's special, right? Like we've done that for the roses, you know, right. be, be her hero. <laughs> nice. All these but things. The damn roses on the planet. Yeah. But, but that's the interesting piece, right? The best damn roses on planet earth. That's a, that's a sales focus product focus thing be her hero yes that's a prospect focus thing and yeah. one of our best campaigns was be her hero nice right and and you guys have found the same with the with the makeup brushes which is all about you know establishing confidence yeah. you know feel confident enough to be yourself and go out feel feel great about the photos that you take and put online right like all these different things about yeah the actual, the actual, uh, needs that the person has. And so we're looking to create a message that bridges the gap between where people are right now and letting them walk across and say, okay, this there's, I don't know exactly what's at the end of this bridge, but it's moving me in the direction of something that will meet my needs. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And bridging that gap, taking them there, filling that void. You know, they, 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 you've got the solution. They're on one side of the river. Now we got to get them across there. You know, that's, yeah. And I, that's I love the message. Um, one of the, uh, uh, one of the books that, um, I've been reading a lot lately is, uh, Breakthrough Advertising. Uh, yeah. Super like ancient manuscript. Quite a tough read. It's quite a tough read. 
it's dense because every word is like 24 karat gold. <laughs> and I have to sit with reading that with a dictionary. <laughs> so I can like decipher most of what's being said in that book. <laughs> right. Well, it's so good. It's so good though. It is. And, it is. um, you know, one of the things that he talks about there is that your job as a marketer is not to create desire. Your job as a marketer is to tap into an existing desire Ooh. and the marketing message is designed to get them from where they are to listening to you. Right. The marketing message is tapping into that existing desire. And I, and I thought about an analogy for that. Um, when I was a kid, we had some maple trees in right. our backyard and it, around this time of year. So like, you know, late February, early March, when the kind of like spring thaw would happen, yeah, we'd go out and we'd take a drill and we would tap into the maple tree and put like a little, like a little tap in there and hang a bucket on it. And then the sap would just come out and we take that sap and we would distill it and make maple syrup. And I had no idea that's how maple syrup was produced. It actually comes out of a tree. It does. <laughs> the real, the real stuff. Oh, yeah. I actually didn't know that. <laughs> Fake maple syrup. God knows how they make it. I don't. <laughs> I thought it was just like some sugary thing that was manufactured. <laughs> Well, you can even taste like you can taste the difference in the real stuff versus the fake stuff. Oh. Um, but in any case, like we didn't create we didn't create the sap in the tree. We just simply drilled a hole so that the sap could come out and pour into our bucket. Right. And that's the way that I see creating the marketing message. Right. We, you're not creating the desire. Like a lot of people have tried to create desire. Great analogy, by the way. If you knew that, that's how maple syrup was made, I guess. Right. Well, yes, that's true. <laughs> I know. I completely destroyed the story. You like, You're like, that is pause this great analogy just so I can understand the. Your maple. analogy makes so little sense. I have to stop you midstream and ask for explanation and clarification. <laughs> <laughs> so, but no, I guess you did that. You tapped into it. I see. Uh, I see uh, yes, I did. That. Yeah. Um, but, but that's, but that's what you're doing with, with the first part of this, with the first part of the marketing message is creating creating an intrigue, creating curiosity, tapping into the desire that you know already exists there. And that's why it's so important that you do this stuff in phase one, the research and understanding the needs and everything else like that, because you can't tap into something that you don't know like where it is. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And if you don't understand it. No, it's impossible. And so, um, so, so there's massive amounts of pieces of the marketing message, so to speak, but the first pieces of that are tapping into that desire. And, um, and I do, I do want to get into, I don't want this to feel like a uh, bait and switch. Where we're talking about more marketing and less selling. Right. And I do want to get into some sales stuff, but I would say any prospect that you have who has been primed the way that we've talked about so far is going to be far more receptive to what yeah. you're about to offer them with you in your with your product or your service than somebody who hasn't. And so I would say that the closing, right? There's that that old movie, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. I don't know if you've seen yeah. that one. <laughs> yes. Right. With the steak knives. The steak knives and Alec Baldwin. And you know, yeah. as as an aside, at that sales job that I had the summer watching or selling the water treatment systems, yeah. one morning my sales manager like required that we all come into the office early and we all, all of the sales guys sat around the conference table and watched that movie. No way. That was yeah. the training. <laughs> that was our training. That's, that was the extent to these guys. These guys did zero marketing. They're just like, <laughs> close, 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 close. Wow. Jeez. But, but, uh, but in any case, like the, the idea in that movie, like people hear, you know, the ABCs of sales always be closing, which has been around for God knows how many decades. Right. But people think like that always means like always be just, just trying to get somebody's credit card, like always be trying to like get them to sign on the dotted line, like always be doing this. And everyone's like, ah, like I don't want to always be closing. It's because you're thinking about closing the wrong way. Right. Like <laughs> what I'm talking about, we're closing before we ever meet the person. Yes. Yeah. We're, clo we're closing before they woke up in the morning. <laughs> yeah, it's already happened. It's already <laughs> happened. 
<laughs> that's always that's always be closing. Like when you're like way back there, and and then they wake up and they're like, you know what? I feel like today, I feel like you know, I want to do something to make myself feel like a little bit happier today. Okay, cool. We got a we got a product that makes you feel significant. Yeah. Right. Boom. Right. Then it's like then it's moving in that direction. So so getting into the sales side of things, we've talked about positioning. We've talked about the fundamentals. We've talked a little bit, very, very little bit about marketing to create that sales message. But on the sales side, I think there are some key things. You have done tons of high ticket sales. Yeah. I've done tons of high ticket sales and <laughs> from everything from water treatment systems all the way across the gamut, right? Services, products, like you name it. Um, what do you think are some of the key elements once you get to that sales conversation, assuming that all this other stuff has been done. Yeah, no, great, great, uh, great point to dive into. So I, I think, um, you know, looking at, looking at over the years of us doing high ticket sales. So on the phone for our stuff, I think one of the, the easiest things that, that we've done is to take away actually from my team, like take away the pressure of selling because we're not actually trying to sell to everybody. We're trying to provide the right, we're trying to pitch, we're trying to reach that point of closing or pitching to the people we know we can help. You know, so I think like for us, when we're going into those type of conversations and we're actually pitching our services or our high ticket items, like I want to, like our, our, our sales process is more of like, I, I think of it as more of a filter these days. It's not some carefully architected string of words that are said in the right sequence in order to tap into some psychological trigger that they can't even refuse. They don't even know why they're giving their credit card. You know, it's not, I, I don't see it as any of that kind of stuff. It's actually going through a filtering process to allow the person to see that it's the right decision for them. Mm. You know, it's almost like this, uh, what, what's that analogy? Sometimes people pass around like inception. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, that, that person reaching the decision themselves. And I know, you know, the, the, the conversation I think around sales and creating this perfect pitch, you know, we've had people, haven't we, you know, we've had salespeople on this, on this podcast over the years, haven't we? That mm -hmm. have parted their points. And I'm sure that many more conventional salespeople might disagree with, you know, the way in which I present a pitch in the way in which we do things. But for me, like, like I say, this this whole conversation where we started, like not feeling comfortable or confident in in pitching, even even when you have a great solution, you know, even if you've done all this groundwork, still it can still feel uncomfortable for people to actually make that pitch. And so I think for me that that's been one of the biggest things for us is actually, you know, forget about trying to sell to everybody and think about trying to find the right people that naturally will connect with what you have. Does that does that make sense? If we've provided, of course, this is why I think for me at least so important that all that groundwork is done. Yeah. You now, because yeah. it's away the difficulty or the pressure of the sales process. Absolutely. Like I would rather talk to four people and close two than talk to 10 people and close two. Right. Exactly. You know, exactly. like why, why, why deal with the other, you know, the other six people if you don't have to. Exactly. Like let, let them opt out before you get to the sales pitch. And, and I know there are people out there who are like, well, sales is a numbers game. And I agree with that. You know, it doesn't mean like, oh, like I talked to two people and nobody bought. So this thing is going to suck forever. Like we're never going to make any money. Like you need to establish like what's a reasonable like conversion rate from the people that you talk to. But the key here is that you're talking with qualified people. Yeah. Pe people that genuinely have the, the need that you can help solve. And the more you can zero in on that, the better your conversion rate is going to be and the less time you have to spend chasing your tail because you're 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 getting in front of more and more people and that's the importance of all the things that we've just talked about prior to this yes right like like yes. so so you know going back to my my college days and the water treatment systems like these guys these guys would send me to anybody's house who could <laughs> breathe and fog a mirror okay <laughs> like they were highly unqualified so yeah. you know so i was lucky to close you know 2 out of 10 um, and I was doing pretty good with that, but if they had just sent me the qualified people, I could have spent half my week enjoying myself and the other half, just talking to the people that were qualified. And so I think making sure that the people are qualified is a really important thing. But I think when, when you get in front of somebody, 
whether it's, you know, it's virtually, it's face to face or like whatever. I think the number one thing that you can do as a salesperson, which I don't, I don't really feel like it's nearly the airtime that it should, because it's not, again, it's just like, I don't know, it's not the fun, exciting, whatever is like to shut up and listen. Ah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> like, listen. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I think, uh, I think that's an early mistake. I know I look back because I, I don't do my own phone calls now, but I, I did at the beginning, you know, it was all me. And as somebody that didn't have any experience in that side of things, that is, I, I don't think I used to let them talk at all. <laughs> <laughs> I know you find that hard to believe. <laughs> regular listeners to the show <laughs> they're like we've never even heard dean talk <laughs> right but no like it, it, it's surprising really like how much of a difference that makes because i think the the inexperienced approach to that would be like well no i have to explain you know i have to tell them how like why they need this thing i have to explain all the stuff they're getting so they understand the value in what i have you know because i think a lot of times as well this comes from people being afraid of making the offer so they 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 talk themselves out of getting to that point you know people will never reach that point if you do the opposite of what you've just said there yeah i'll, I'll and i so I'll, i will share one of the one of the triumphant stories oh, like good one. let's go all right so the time the time that i like really learned this so it was uh it was the middle of the summer when i had this job it was you know i was in florida it's super hot my i had this piece of crap car no air conditioning, you know, I'm driving around like everywhere, like with a change of t-shirt. Cause when I got out, I was like, so gross. I need to change my t-shirt before I went to somebody's house. And I got to this one guy and before I left the office, the sales manager said, Hey, here's, you know, here's your lead for this morning. And, you know, hands me my little slip. And he's like, just so you know, this guy has kicked out the last two sales guys that we've sent to his house. Right. And I was like, well, why, why are you sending me to his house then? Like, this seems, this seems like a huge waste of my time. Like, why yeah, are you, you doing don't want me around this place? So yeah. What? You just like, you just want me to go out and like kill my day. <laughs> and he's like, no, no. He's like, we, we think there's a sale in there and we think you can get it. And I was just like, all right, man, whatever. And this guy like was on my nerves all the time. I was just like, whatever. So I got in my car, I drove to this guy's house. He's like all the way, like in the backwoods of Florida somewhere, you know, like, Spanish moss hanging from the trees, like sort of like small dilapidated house. And I pulled up. I didn't even want to pull in this guy's driveway because I was like, I don't know. Maybe this guy's got a shotgun. He's going to shoot me like, you know, who knows what's going to happen. So I parked on the street, walked up the driveway. I didn't even bring in my kit. I had like this silver suitcase that I would bring into somebody's house because it was a long pitch. It was like two hours. I did all these demos. I like washed glasses. I took spots out of the rug. I like did all these different things. And I walked up to this guy's door and I knocked on the door and it was like this like creaky screen door. And he like opens the screen door and like pops out. And it, this guy was like, if you've ever seen like the show, like duck dynasty, or whatever, where it's like, you know, like redneck, like guys wearing like camo, camo baseball cap, like white wife beater, you know, <laughs> shredded jeans, the whole thing. And he pops his head out the door and he's like, who are you? And I was like, well, I'm, I'm from the water treatment company. And he's like, ah, he's like, I sent the last two of your guys packing. And I was like, I know. And I don't have to be here either. I was oh. like, if you, I was like, you want me to leave? I'll leave. I was like, I don't need to waste your time. And I don't need to waste my time. Like, I'm good either way. You tell me what you want to do. And he just like, kind of like looks me up and down. He's like, all right, you can come in. I was like, you sure? I was like, really? You're not hurting my feelings if we don't do this. And he's like, no, you can come in. I was like, all right, I'm going to go to my car, get my kit. So I go to my car, get my kit, come in this guy's kitchen. And I sit down at his table. He's got this super little round table. Never, I'll never forget this guy's name. His name's Kevin and sit down at Kevin's table. And, uh, and I just looked at him before I got into anything and I made it and I made a strategic decision to like, listen. And I said to him, I was like, Kevin, I was like, I got to ask you, man, why'd you kick out the other two guys? Right. <laughs> like I, I was genuinely curious, right? Like, why did you do that? And he looks at me and he starts telling me how they were assholes. He starts telling me how he hates my company. 
He starts <laughs> telling me how what we're doing is a scam. He starts telling me, you know, how the government screwed him out of his thing, how like this thing is wrong. Like he goes, for, he goes on and on for 45 minutes, like without taking a breath. And I'm just sitting there like listening to this guy, <laughs> like hearing what this guy is all about. And it's clear to me, you know, a few minutes into this conversation, this guy has not had one person to talk to in forever. <laughs> right. And I'm like, all right, well, I got the time blocked out. I'm going to hear what this guy has to say. So he's like 45 minutes into this tirade. And he looks at me. He's like, I really want a beer. He's like, do you want a beer? And I was like, I'd love a beer. So he goes to his fridge. We crack open a beer together. Now we're sitting there at his little kitchen table drinking a beer. He's telling me about conspiracy theories. He's telling me about this, that, and the other thing. Finally, like finishes his beer, puts it down on the table and looks at me. He's like, he's like, all right, man. He's like, well, what did you want to talk about? And I was like, well, I was like, it's, it's not really like nearly as interesting as what you've been talking about, but I'll just kind of run through it with you. I did the shortest pitch I've ever done. Usually the pitch was two hours. This one I did in like 25 to 30 minutes, 25, 30 minutes later, this guy looks at me. He's like, you know what? He's like, I like you. He's like, and I like what this thing does. And he's like, and I want it. So there we go. Nice. Two other guys got kicked out. Why? Because they went in there and they didn't listen. They went in there and they tried to pitch a product. I went in, same product, same exact product. It wasn't even a different product it's from the same freaking company. The only <laughs> difference, the only difference was the approach. And the approach was based on listening, right? And the whole time he was talking, I'm collecting data. And I'm thinking about when I get to my pitch, how can I pitch this in a way that is relevant to this guy? Yeah. He's like, oh, like every now and then, you know, my niece comes over and, you know, she hangs out with me. So I go into my pitch and I'm like, well, when your niece comes over, you probably want her to have clean drinking water, right? And he's like, yeah. Yes. Well, I think you, you, you've hit on like a really important side note in this piece is like, it's not just about asking the questions or listening for the sake of doing that. Like there is a specific purpose behind this process. You know, you are finding out the information that you need to know to be able to do the job properly. Because ultimately what you are going to be looking for in this scenario is like, is this the right solution for this person? First yes. and foremost, you have to be able to know, like in the water scenario there, you have to be confident that if I offer this thing that this guy is actually going to benefit. You know, when we're not going back to what we said at the beginning, we're not just trying to sell anything to anyone just to take advantage of people here. We're trying to find the right people for what we have. You know, that's how you can gain that confidence in what you're doing. But like when we're asking, you know, when James, when you sat there and you just listened, I think you said a really important point there is like from listening to him for two hours, I was able to put my pitch together in a 25, 30 minute period that specifically spoke to what yeah. you discovered by listening was what he was actually looking for what his problems were what what other people what other people hadn't done correctly why he did kick those guys out well that tells you straight away like right i need to not do what these guys did yeah yeah who you know, and, so and using this to find that information because that's going to give you the the things you discover by listening gives you everything you need to make that sale absolutely People will tell you what you need to know to sell them if you're willing to listen and ask the right questions. And a good salesperson will listen at least two to three times more yes. than they're talking. Yes. And it's not just like listening, be like, you know, because you've been on you've been on in places where people are like, oh, like, so what are your goals? Oh, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay. And like, what's this? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Like, and you know they're not listening and they're just yeah. trying to like check the boxes because somebody told them to ask questions. Yeah. Like I'm asking questions so that I freaking understand this person and where they're coming from better than they know themselves. Definitely. Definitely. And the, and the, this is the equivalent. I bet most people listening to this have had an experience like this where you get those, uh, kind of vague private messages on social media where people are just spamming inboxes, trying to read, you get it on LinkedIn and Facebook and all kinds of things. And it's almost like, hang on, what you've just written to me isn't even relevant to my situation. Exactly. Like, you click like sometimes people even get the name wrong because they just copied and pasted from the last one. Yeah. But that's kind of like what getting this environment, this selling environment wrong is just like, it's like you, you can't treat every person like the same in that scenario. You can't. So I think this might be uh, a good place for us to pause 
for yes. creating the perfect sales pitch part one. We'll be back uh, next time. It's just you and I will do creating the perfect sales pitch part two. Yes. Um, if you guys have questions, you have scenarios, you want to do like a little bit of like, all right, how do I sell this? Make sure you dial in for the next episode. We're live every single Tuesday, one o'clock Eastern. We're going to sign off right now. Any parting shots, Mr. Dean Holland, before we leave? No, just, uh, tune in for the next one, because I think next time we've really perfectly lined this up by accident to really share some incredible tips in the next show. Some real specific things from real Kate. I don't mind sharing real case uh, examples of the type of way we orchestrate our stuff. You know, one of my businesses, multi six figures a month with just one salesperson. So I think we've got a lot we can share in that next call. Absolutely. So thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe. Leave us some comments. Leave us a review. Tell your friends about us and we will talk with you guys later. See you, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to Just the Tips, where we believe business should be profitable and fun. For show notes, links, and other information on our guests, visit justthetipsshow.com. For more information on how to connect with Dean Holland, visit deanholland.com. And if you'd like to go from being a hustling entrepreneur to an effective CEO, capable of running your company without being stuck in the day-to-day, Visit me for free training and resources at jamesbfreel.com. Our theme music is Happy Happy Game Show by Kevin McLeod. Licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution 3.0 License.